and welcome to the Oakland A's UK YouTube channel. I'm Matt and in this video we're kind of turning things around to what we had yesterday. Yesterday's video we looked at Chris Davis who's been traded away to the Rangers. One of our beloved A's is no longer an A. And we were getting our heads around that. It seemed to make sense in the end, although emotionally it was a difficult one to process. There's been a few more rumours about a former A who may, may potentially come back. He's out there on the market, he's a free agent. A few people have been throwing it around, not least some A's fans. Our good friends at the Oakland 68s put it brilliantly when they said, it's time, bring him home. And of course, they mean Yoenis Cespedes. So the big question today is, is it yes to Cess or no to Yo? So let's start with the case against. We start off with the obvious point that Joanna Cespedes really hasn't played much for the last three or four years. And um, we've moved on Chris Davis, which made sense. Chris Davis is someone who's done so much for us in the past, but struggled with some injuries, lingering issues, production going down in the last year and a half. Is Joanna Cespedes going to be exactly the same? When you look at his numbers, we go back to 2017, he only played in, or he missed half of the season. In 2017, in 2018, he played in only 38 games, missed all of 2019, a variety of weird injuries there. And then we had the weird thing about 2020, where he made the team, he signed a one-year deal with the Mets to go back to the Mets, started the season with the team, and then apparently went AWOL, opted out the rest of the season. We really don't know what went on there. Frankly, I don't trust their former GM, and it seemed like they were messing him about and he wanted it out. But we don't know. What we do know is that if you're looking at Chris Davis and thinking, well, he hasn't done much for us in the last year and a half, you've got to say the same for Joanna Cespedes. He's not really done a lot in like the last four years. The next part to this would be a no if really he's going to have to be a designated hitter. We've just moved on Chris Davis and part of the logic to that is freeing up the DH spot. We know KD really is limited to being a DH. Very few teams, I mean the Twins are the one team with Nelson Cruz who do it now, but most teams don't use a full-time DH. They use that spot to work things, work the at-bats around and give a bit of flexibility to the roster and that's something the A's really need this year. So Cespedes can't really play the field or if playing the field is a bit too much of a risk with him getting injured again then that's not going to work out we don't need someone coming in and tying up that dh spot i think i think we'd be better off to look for someone else if cespedes can't play the field and finally let's put those two things together and raise the obvious point is this our heart trying to overrule our head we've just well the front office at least have just done this with kd and thinking the other way around we love KD, think so much of him, but it's time to move on. Are we potentially making a problem that we've just solved? Are we saying we loved what Cespedes did for us in the past, let's bring him back, let's hope we can rekindle the fire that was in him when he was with the A's and he's going to bounce back. Of course we would love that to happen, of course that would be a great story, but his track record in recent years suggests that's unlikely. So are we just hoping for too much here and wishing for something that's unlikely to really happen? So what about the positive side of things then? Why would it be yes to Cess? Well, first off, there is a need for the A's to bring in some more bop to the outfield. The outfield was a bit of a disappointment last year, although Robbie Grossman did well. Turned that into a two-year contract with the Tigers, so he's gone and out of the way. But Scotty had his struggles too. So we've got the Lays, we've got Mark Canna for this year at least. But we could do with another bat out there who can bring some bop to the lineup. So there's definitely a space for someone like Cespedes to fill. The second thing is there isn't really an obvious candidate currently on a 40-man roster who would use the space instead. The one person potentially would be Seth Brown, but other than that. You don't really see an internal candidate to take it. We've got a good prospect in Lewis Barrera, who's an outfield prospect, but it, he seems more like a right fielder, and apparently a very good fielder potentially. So I don't think he would be starting the season in left field for us. So there is the potential to bring someone in. And although the 40-man roster is currently full, we've got guys like Dustin Fowler, maybe even Sky Bolt, who... I don't think either are really going to pan out for the A's, so if we had to lose one of those to make space on a roster to get Cespedes in, then that would be perfectly doable. The next thing that goes in the favour of Joanna Cespedes is arguably the most important thing for the Fisher A's, and that is he's probably going to be cheap. 
considering the struggles he's had in staying healthy over the recent years, you wouldn't expect him to be able to command much of a salary on the free agent market. Of course, he's made some good money and perfectly good on him that he has done so. You would think there is the potential to do a deal there, a relatively low guaranteed sum and then various incentives that can bump up the salary if he plays well and he plays a lot. So you would not expect at all that money is going to be a factor in stopping this from happening. And finally, just think about the confidence boost it would give to everyone in the organisation to see Joanna Cespedes back in the green and gold. We know when he came back to Oakland in 2017 with the Mets, he told Susan Slosser at the San Francisco Chronicle how much he loved his time with the A's and how he really wanted to try and spend his final year of his career back in Oakland. Whether this would be his final year, we don't know. But there's clearly a genuine bond between Cespedes and the A's. So you know he would love for it to happen. What better place for him to banish the bad years with the Mets and really rebuild his career than with the A's. It would work well for him potentially and it would work well for us too. So there's definitely plenty of reasons why Cespedes would want to come back and why we would want him back too. So what do you think? Is it yes to Cess or no to Yo? I'll be honest, if his physical condition allows him to play the outfield, I'd be more than happy to see us taking a punt on Yo. I think He's someone that has a real X factor, always has, and I know he's had his struggles with the Mets in recent years, but if there's one place where he could get Fields back on track, it was back here in Oakland. And because he's not going to command a large guarantee in terms of money, it's very much a low risk, high reward type of situation for the A. So why not give it a whirl and see what he does? But what do you think? Let me know in your comments below and we'll see what happens as the rumours keep swirling about a potential return for Johannes Cespedes.